Well, I think the past 15 years or so have, have shown a real revolution in the care of ARDS patients. Um, most importantly with the publication of the low tidal volume ventilation study about 14 years ago. Um, and then over the past three or four years, we've had another couple of major trials come out, including uh, the proning trial and the neuromuscular blockers trial. And combination of those and the other changes in ICU supportive care that have evolved over the past decade or so have led to a decrease in ARDS mortality, which is terrific. But mortality, even in randomized controlled trials, remains pretty high, 20 to 30 percent. So there's still room for improvement. Well, so I would say the most recent major positive trial in ARDS was the proning trial that was actually presented last year at ATS, in which patients with moderate to severe ARDS were proned. Uh, this was a French trial. Um, and showed a really significant improvement in mortality. Um, that's probably the most recent positive clinical trial that's come out. So right now biomarkers are really more of a research tool than they are a tool for clinical practice. Um, they're helping us to understand how we can identify patients earlier. Um, they're helping us to understand some of the biologic heterogeneity within ARDS patients. Um, and they may be able to serve farther down the road as, you know, either risk stratification or surrogate outcome measures. So right now I think they're mainly a research tool. I think we need the development of rapid assays in order to make them something that we can really use at the bedside in clinical practice. But in order to do that, first of course we have to show that they're going to make an impact. So we published last year in the Blue Journal a paper showing that in patients who come to the emergency room who are critically ill and are going to the ICU, that measurement of a plasma biomarker called angiopoietin-2 could predict the subsequent development of ARDS in patients at risk. And that's, to us, exciting because it, it suggests that we can pick up on the processes that are leading to ARDS before the clinical syndrome develops. Mm -hmm. But there's a couple of important caveats, and those are that about two-thirds to three-fourths of the patients who developed ARDS already had it by the time we even enrolled them. So ARDS is developing really, really fast in these patients. Many times before they even get to the emergency department, the process is underway. Um, and the other major caveat is what I mentioned before, which is just that we don't have a bedside assay yet for ANG2. So until we have that, it's going to be difficult to incorporate this into clinical practice. But I think it's a really interesting and important research tool.